From the top of the CBS Interactive Building in San Francisco, California, it's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tom. Oh, the introduction always gets through. You know what? That's the what last, gets me pumps up. Dude, I, the last time when you were doing that fader thing with the music, it's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> dude, I was like, I was bumping to that. I dig that. Welcome to the show, everybody, guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. You're listening to the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. This is episode, I believe, 39. My goodness, we are growing up. Everything here, all Apple. This is a complimentary piece of the Apple Byte video podcast that we put out every week. But we talk about the stories in detail. We bring new information to the table. And it's also a chance for you guys and gals to participate with our phone number call. And we keep the number hot. It's not a live call, but we will ask you guys 1-800-616-2638. Be a part of our show. Call, leave your name, where you're from, and get your question or your comment. 30 seconds, keep it tight, keep it right, and we'll give you that extra munch with that Apple Bite crunch. Yeah, we had a lot of good calls this week. We had, we had, we got tons, so uh, we can't wait to get to those. So let's just jump into the show, starting off right now, MacBook Pros. We have heard so much about the iPhone. People have been asking me about MacBook Pros. Have people been asking you about MacBook Pros, Stephen Beecham? A lot of phone calls about MacBook Pros. MacBook for Pros, for, MacBook Pro for show. For show. So here's the latest story. According to Digitimes, and it's also been corroborated by 9to5Mac, the new MacBook Pros, the fully revamped, redesigned ones that I've been telling all of you just to wait for for about the past year, but also just wait till WWDC. It appears that they might be coming a little later, but they will be coming, according to these reports, in the fourth quarter of 2016 with an all-new, thinner, and lighter design. But here's the hot stuff. The new MacBook Pros, both the 13-inch and 15-inch models, are expected to come with a new OLED display touch bar. There's going to be an OLED kind of... If you've seen something like the Razer laptops, gaming laptops, they kind of have this touch panel. Think of a OLED strip that replaces the function keys located above your actual keyboard. Huh. A nice long line so there. So it's not a touch screen. It's not like a touch screen. on it's the keyboard... It's like, oh, well, weird. we don't, you know, we don't exactly really know what it is other than it's a OLED touch bar. Maybe the icons can change. Maybe depending on the app that you're using, they might be context sensitive. You might have media controls at one point. Or if you're using a, something like Final Cut Pro, you might have some quick shortcuts or something like iTunes, which needs all the help it can get yes. <laughs> for, for a quicker. Hey, you know what? Instead of navigating that thing, I'd rather just like type an icon for movies, TV shows, <laughs> music, podcasts. The Apple Byte podcast just talk specifically. To just, just talk to me. So the report is that it will include this OLED touch bar. There is no word of what type of functionality this will have, but this is going to be a big jump, a big move for the MacBook Pros. We haven't really seen any drastic design change. We know about the processors, but this will be the, according to Ming-Chi Kuo of Digitimes, the, the biggest revamp we've seen in four years. It will also... Um, these are expected to support both USB and C and Thunderbolt 3. Nice. So we have this whole story about the MacBook Pros, and I've been telling people to wait till WWDC. And it looks like you'll probably have to wait a little longer, but you might see something a little earlier still in the shape of MacBooks. Uh, an additional report by Digitimes from Ming-Chi Kuo says that the new macbook right we know we have that ultra thin kind of super sleek ultra thin design right now yeah that's in a 12 inch format the report says that apple is going to release a 13 inch model and it kind of sounds weird because you're saying why would you have a 13 inch and a 12 inch model of this super ultra thin it's just <laughs> a one inch difference <laughs> one but, inch is all the difference <laughs> it makes made. all the difference to me um but with this laptop they're saying that the MacBooks Ultra Thin will pretty much be the super portable for Apple's line. The new MacBook Pros we just talked about will stay that high-end, full, feature-rich, feature-packed MacBook Pro. And then the current MacBook Airs, yeah, those guys that are actually still pretty pretty thin and slim, will move down to the budget laptop. Oh, okay. And when we say budget, Apple's budget laptop right now is around, uh, I think they start at eight ninety nine for an eleven inch budget laptop. Eight ninety nine after tax and uh, Apple Care. That ain't you're budget. At like a thousand dollars or more. That ain't budget. <laughs> but that that's that's the assumption how Apple's going to kind of lay out their line. Three different specific lines: Pro, Ultra Thin, 
an error, which will be the budget line. So we'll see the, the thing about this is this 13 inch ultra thin is expected to be available the third quarter of this year. And if that is the case, we should definitely see that at WWDC. And I really hope that man, WWDC has to be a feature showcase for the new MacBook pro. It just yeah. has to be to me. You know, I'm a little disappointed actually by this touchscreen strip you're talking about because <laughs> Why don't they just make a touchscreen laptop? I mean, it's... Put it in the screen. Yeah, put it in the screen, please. I mean, it's so much more useful. To, I've had I've had a touchscreen for three or four years now, and I love it. Scrolling, hitting play on a video. Yeah. Every website has a big button now. You just push the button. It's so much faster than using your, you know, mousing around or using your little trackpad to, like, find it and then hit the button. It's so much faster. And Apple makes awesome displays, so why don't they just make... A touchscreen display. Well, I will also tell you why. Here's the thing. It's going to be a strip? What is a strip? Come on. Come on. <laughs> a touch bar strip? What? We want touch bar. We want touch screen. Yeah. <laughs> Look, the other issue that Apple has here, and maybe, maybe they surprise us. Maybe they bring a touchscreen laptop to the table is they don't have software to support it yet. Uh... They really don't. This is the conundrum that Apple is facing where you can make all this cool stuff, but right, hardware and software together, Apple has no answer for that right now. And they sure ain't gonna give me an iPad Pro with iOS on a laptop. No, that ain't. that's not gonna cut it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't cut it right now. It doesn't cut it already. So <clears throat> your point, Steven, 100% right on the money. Touch bars like, oh, that it could be cool. But remember, let's rewind back to December when you and I had our prediction show. We right. talked all about the product line. I said, arguably, Apple's laptops will be the most exciting product this year, just from a standpoint of it's time to revamp them. But are they really going to be moving so many units of these laptops that it's going to make that much of a difference? No. Probably not. So, look, I like the fact that we see these new stories. It's exciting. It's something new. People want something new. They always get excited when you're like, oh, a thinner design, a MacBook Pro, cool. But how important will this touch bar really be? How, uh, really. I don't know, but like last week we were talking about that iPad, um, how you can use Touch ID on the iPad through the screen, right? With that high frequency thing that that was going to yeah, be yeah, sending, sending the waves. Maybe the maybe waves they're setting it up for that. They could on the be. laptop. You know, they could you know be. What I'm maybe that's maybe that's why they're building this little strip so that you can use the Touch ID. Yeah, I strip. did. You you well, you make a great point. I did forget to mention that that actual laptop, although they don't uh, include it in the same detail they do say that the new macbook pros that are expected to come out will have a touch id sensor yes so it could be part of the touch bar i mean quite honestly it would be funny if this touch bar is really just a little square on the corner that's just for touch id <laughs> right you don't it's we, gonna get all greasy and gross you're gonna have to clean it with windows you never know with these rumors and stories but this is the information that has been presented to us uh by digitimes by ming chi kuo and corroborated by nine to five mac so Really, two laptops coming this year, a revamped MacBook Pro line, 13 and 15, and then a new 13-inch uh, potential ultra-thin. So we will wait and see. All right. Okay, let's talk iPhone 7. Plenty of rumors. This is like a cornucopia. Myriad rumors of the iPhone 7. The first one comes to us from a photo leak that showed off a component of this dual-camera module. Now, this is from... Oh. Sorry, my nose. I was about to sneeze. That sounds really bad on audio. There's a sneeze button right there if you need it. A press, sniffles press, button? Yeah, press the button. I'll do sniffles button next time. Okay. But uh, Steve Hemmersoffer from Nowhere Else FR showcased an image of a dual camera component that is believed to be part of the iPhone 7 Plus. But even more interesting in these pictures, um, and for those people watching Beach, I have a link in the B-roll that they might be able to see, but I'll still talk. Those pictures are really interesting because it also shows SD card capacities that are rumored to be linked to this 7 Plus. It shows us 16. It shows us 64. It also shows us 256 gigs. Whoa. So could the new iPhone 7 Plus bring 256 gigs of storage based on these leaks? Possibly. This is from Steve Hemmerstoffer. Nowhere else so far. I think the biggest concern, and I talk about this in our actual video show that's posting later today. Dude, they're still showing me 16 gigs as the starting jump off point for a freaking <laughs> iPhone. Are it's you crazy. kidding me? It's crazy. Like, is Apple still going to do this crap? I can't. <laughs> they are. 
we we might have to start a movement. Like we have right now there's all these movements going on. Black Lives Matter, Asian American Actors Matter, <laughs> Transgender Bathrooms Matter. We need 16 gigs on an iPhone don't matter. It <laughs> doesn't matter. It Does, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's horrible. It is horrible. I, I mean, can't I got, take I got the 64, it. and I already filled it That's up what with, I'm talking about. with videos, and I'm like, oh. It's time to start a new movement. All those movements are kind of getting played out. I'm just <laughs> – I'm playing around, guys. Don't take it all seriously. Yeah, I, you know I'm joking. Please. But the fact that I have to disclaimer that is really sad these days, right? Oh, yeah. We'll get comments. Yeah, we will. But 16 gigs doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I like don't matter, though. It's kind of cooler. 16 gigs don't matter. 16 gigs don't matter. <laughs> so so we'll, what, would, what would be the lowest 60, amount of fine, gigs? 64? Fine. No, no, fine. 32. 32. 32 fine. Even 32, you'll fill up your phone 32 in like is, four, At least Samsung three, is doing 32. Months. It's better than 16. Uh, we will move along, otherwise I will talk about this for the next hour. I can't wait till we can get two Terry's on there. Two Terry's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All It'd right, like two thousand dollar iPhone. <laughs> next up, a report from LG and Apple uh, say that I don't know if we did this last week. Did we do this last week? I don't remember. Let me see. Man, my brain is my brain is mush. But basically, Sony is believed to be the component supplier for that dual camera for the iPhone. Reports say that they have been lagging and LG will now take its place as the primary supplier for the iPhone 7 Plus dual camera component. Cool. I think we did talk we about We did because you know why bit. we talked about optical image stabilization <laughs> for the 4.7 inch and we both shared about that. Yay. Next story. New <laughs> it's just a it's just a callback. New iPhone 7 schematic images again their schematics running wild show what is believed to, again, be a dual camera spot exclusive to the 7 Plus model, but no smart connector. We've talked a lot about the fact that they had those three magic dots on the iPhone 7 Plus seen typically in the iPad Pro and the iPad Pro line, 12.9 inch and 9.7 inch. Also kind of exciting because you could really make a lot slimmer profile battery charging case because it provides both data and power. Sure, people talk about a keyboard, but I really think like a battery case would be able to take the best, you know, be able to use this to its advantage, the best out of any product out there. Uh, so that's thrown out there. We also have purported photos of the back of an iPhone 7. Now, one of the big things that we've seen now in renders in schematics is that the actual camera lens for the 4.7 inch iPhone is bigger, is larger. That's always a good thing. So images have been showing this off and also confirming if these are to be believed the uh, antenna lines being removed but there's a look at it for those of you watching again a larger it the it bevel nice. yeah the bevel of it is a little different um but it's the bigger camera lens is always a good thing uh, for the iphone okay uh, and finally in another iphone 7 news flash rumor flash purported photos from nowhere else fr show a case design aligns with the whole camera thing we're talking about, but has four speaker grills. Basically, this case shows off the speakers as if it's aligned like the iPad Pro. Four, two on each side, top and bottom. We haven't seen that anywhere. I don't know if this is just some crazy person making up stuff and throwing out a case. We know cases can be true, can be real, can be fake, but this is, look, all these five, six, seven, <laughs> seven iPhone 7 stories all dropped this week. Really? So... People are talking. We have surround sound on our iPhone? Maybe. S true uh, stereo sound? <laughs> so I guess that's a four. Not 4.1. That's just four. Yeah, it's just four. <laughs> so um, Almost surround sound. Almost. Almost. Uh, another thing is that economic uh, daily Taiwan Economic Daily News is reporting that this new iPhone 7 Apple is re really believes in it because they are prepping and have told their suppliers to build as many as 78 million iPhone 7 units for launch. That would make this the largest ramp up before uh, up to the iPhone 6. The iPhone 6 had a huge ramp up, for, ramp up for suppliers. Apple expects this iPhone 7 to be the same. We saw Tim Cook touting about how this new iPhone, you have things that you can't live without. Mm -hmm. Water, oxygen, food. Fire. Shelter, <laughs> fire, 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 <laughs> fire. <laughs> they're gonna build. These guys are gonna build seventy-eight million. They're gonna need to hire Dude. a few more people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure there's more workers. 
That's a lot of my people right there, man. They're working hard. <laughs> they are working oh, hard. Yeah, they're ready. Um, transitioning over to the iPhone future. Look, I'm sorry. There is a lot of hype now around this 10th anniversary iPhone. It is not called the iPhone future. That is what we call it here on the show. Yeah. Most likely, they're going to be really boring and call it like the iPhone X, but then they'll say call the X10. That's what everyone's been saying. Yeah, iPhone I th- X. I that's think it's like going to pretty be much the, the everyone on the internet. That's their guess. And I also think that they will follow in line with the uh, X Men movies naming. So they'll have the X2 United. No, let's not do that. And then the X3 Last Stand, which was a horrible movie. That will just do. Then we'll go iPhone X First Class iPhone just... <laughs> Days of Future Past, <laughs> iPhone X Age of Apocalypse. Oh, man. Please, it's... please, let's not get on the superhero bandwagon with the iPhone <laughs> naming. Thank you. They aren't going to do that. They aren't going to do that. Uh, but this report says a surge in OLED equipment orders are linked directly to iPhones. Why is this? So we have this supplier who, for for companies like LG and Samsung, they need equipment to build OLED displays. They had orders four times the amount in a single quarter. It was around $700 million. They equaled up to one year's worth of orders. So this is Applied Materials is the company, right? Wow. So they reported that, hey, we had a boost four times order size this quarter, equivalent to a whole year, clearly indicating that some certain mobile company is ramping up from some certain type of OLED display. And based on the timing of the equipment getting to these manufacturers, that would time it out for next year. That's crazy. Seven hundred million uh, in a quarter. Wow. I'm sorry. There's a lot of hype already around the. Again, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna skip the iPhone Seven yet. I've bought every iPhone except for the Five S. I skipped. I went from five to six. I did not get a Five S. But they got to really do something for me to be like, yeah, I'm gonna get a Seven. Even though I review this stuff, I gotta have it. Uh, I skipped the Five S. Yeah, so probably, I'm more I, than I, willing to skip again if it's not that great. I'm in every other iPhone adopter, so I probably will skip the seven and just get the eight when it comes out. Once my or maybe just wait till my phone dies. Yeah, and a lot of people will call <laughs> me out and be like, "Oh, you, you're supposed to review this stuff." Like, look, I'm I tr- I'm trying to represent you all like a consumer. I buy all my stuff. Yes. Repeat. We all buy all our stuff. Repeat. I buy all my things. Yes. And um, you know, got to represent for the people. <laughs> Got to represent. Represent. All right. Uh, in a fun story, this one. Uh, this one's probably like my happy story of the day or of the week. Tim Cook believes that the iPhone might have actually been discovered in 1670. What am I talking about? All right. So Tim Cook was at Startup Fest in Europe in Amsterdam, and he was on stage and he was being interviewed uh, by the former European Commissioner for Digital Agenda. Her name is Neely Crows, and in this Q and A kind of session in front of an audience, she asked Tim to be like, "Oh, um, you know, were you there when the phone, you know, where and when did the actual iPhone kind of come to fruition? Not the day it was released, but when did it actually happen?" And Tim Cook kind of jokingly said, "Oh, yeah, you know, I thought I knew, but then I saw a Rembrandt when we went to the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, and it." Looks like to me that someone was holding an iPhone. So it does. We're gonna, you know, we have the picture here. Uh, it does kind of like, kind of ish. Like it's like she's making a, a dog video with a dog in her lap right now. You know, some it's sort a, of funny viral video. So this <laughs> piece of work is actually not a Rembrandt. It was done by Pieter de Hooch in 1670. The name of the painting is called "Man Handing a Letter to a Woman in the Entrance Hall of a House." Wait, is that a that's a man? The, yeah, yeah, I you guess. know, the you one know. with the iPhone's a man. Well, man handing a letter. No, no, okay. no. The dude with the iPhone. I think that's the letter. Okay, that's what it I looks think. like a woman. There's a woman sitting on down with a little cute dog that is not to me those a dog that size that is smaller than your thigh is a rat. And I'm sorry for all you listening. I'm used to golden retrievers, baby. This is a chihuahua. I'm used to a big dog that I could that is a dog. No, it's like dress them up in clothes and stuff. I hate. <laughs> That's the worst. They call them toy dogs. Dude, There's that's a not a dog. That's West, a dress-up toy, it's dude. It's my favorite uh, that's the worst. entry at the Westminster Abbey dog show is the toys. I'm telling you. Periscopers, tell me what your favorite dog is because I know <laughs> it ain't one of those little pipsqueak chihuahuas that are just like, I mean, I eat those things. <laughs> <laughs> so this is prior art to the iPhone. 
Yes, yes. Assist, yeah. night 16, 1670. Wow. Um, there you go. The the iPhone. So I've got a funny. Th- I got a funny thing to just piggyback on this. Did you ever hear? Because this this came up in in talking about it. Did you ever hear about the time traveler uh, from the from the Mike Tyson Peter McNeely fight? Did you know about this? No. I okay. Never heard of this. Um, uh, while I'm talking about this, in the document, go to the CNET link. Uh huh. Um, it's oh, about I the see, same I story. See. Okay, yeah, yeah, open yeah. it up and scroll down. And I want to tell people about this time traveler thing. So basically, it's the boxing match with Mike Tyson, Peter McNeely, long time ago, long time ago. And in the crowd, there's. You'll see it um, for those of you watching, but in the crowd, there's a guy holding like a white device oh, with like a lens yeah, and a circle. What is that? In, there and at the time there what were no there were no cameras. There were no cameras. Like, you know, these are this is year this is like what? the Canon S one hundreds. There were no cameras out there at all that looked like that at all. And everyone is trying to figure out what exactly was that device. That I'm telling so you, funny. just search up time traveler Mike Tyson fight. And you're gonna what? be like, it even has like a flash, dude. On I'm it. telling you, I'm that not even, weird. I'm not even messing around. <laughs> so there's some. T- Tim Cook may not be wrong. There's something to it. He's from here from six, 1670. And I think was that fight in like the early 90s, I believe. Probably. I can't that, remember. That's when Mike Tyson was at his it, biggest. Look at that. That is so weird. Yeah, it was. It's insane. People are gonna be like, what? And. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love this video. I love videos like this. That's what I'm talking about. It's so fun. Five million, six million views almost. Wow. So you know what we also love? We love you all, the Apple Byte Nation. You guys call us and make our show what it is today. So again, the number 1-800-616-2638. Call us, leave your name, your message. But we're going to go to our phone calls and talk to you all. And again, uh, I called out for the ladies to, to check in with us and We'll see if we got someone to represent, all right? All right, here we go. Okay. Call number one. Hey, Brian Tong. This is Jacob from Almonte, California. I just wanted to ask a question. Do you think all the features that were that are rumored for the 10th anniversary iPhone is going to affect the sales of the iPhone 7? Like maybe from the, the, bezel, the bezel display? Thanks, and I love the show, guys. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. Okay, so I think in any case, because... Tim Cook doubled down on secrecy, and we know nothing about the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 10th anniversary. <laughs> it's like, come on. Uh, no matter what, they're all rumors. I'm going to make my purchasing decision based on what the 7 has when it's officially announced. But I will tell you right now, the 10th anniversary phone sounds like the phone to get. You oh, know? yeah, definitely. Right? Definitely. I mean, just the design, the potential touch ID with no home button, uh, wireless charging, OLED display. It's kind of sad. It almost sounds like a Samsung Galaxy phone that I'm talking about right now. <laughs> it, it's so, it totally it's does. so sad. <laughs> uh, I love the Apple Bite. Uh, so, you know, wait till the actual stuff comes out and then make a decision. That, that's, what, that's what I'd always say. Hey, real quick, Papa Snarf. Yeah, Papa Snarf. In the YouTube yeah. chat room is saying that that is a Casio camera and that that video was debunked a while ago. Some sort of Casio camera. Why you gotta? Why do you gotta kill my? Why you gotta kill my dreams? Like <laughs> seriously, we like conspiracy theories. We don't know that theories. for sure. We don't know that for sure. This is Papa Snarf is telling well, us this. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you on Periscope, someone put wrote the same thing, and I'm like, dude, don't kill my vibe. Don't kill. Don't harsh my vibe right now. Don't harsh my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> don't harsh my mellow, please. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, it's sure in my, in your mind right now, you're like, I'm gonna wait for the 10th anniversary, but. Just wait till the actual phone gets announced and then make your decision. And and then maybe you're like, okay, I'm good. I'll, I'll get one. We'll see. Okay. We'll see what Tim says we can't live without. Yes. I'm so curious to see what we can't live without. I'm t- I am too. Okay, next call. Hi, my name's Josh Carp. I'm calling from Ambler, Pennsylvania. My question is simple. I love my iPad Mini 4, um, but I'd really like to see an iPad Pro 7.9 inch. My question is, do you think that will be the next iteration? Because I'm debating whether to hold on to my iPad Mini 4 and just wait for the fall or upgrade to an iPad Pro 9.7 inch. Um, Thanks. You guys are awesome. I love your shows, the videos. Um, It really uh, makes my life better. Thank you. (laughs) Nice. We love that. We're happy we make your life better. You make our lives better by contributing with that call, and I guess we – 
I feel like flattered that people say that. Yeah, type hearing of stuff. that call made my life better. Thank you. Made my day better for sure. Exactly for sure. Uh, so the question about is Apple going to bring the iPad Pro features to the Mini? My right off the top, just knowing how Apple thinks, I would say a no, only because by giving you something more, something extra to differentiate the Mini line from the from the Pro line, that's what they want you to do. They want you to be like, oh, I want that extra stuff. I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to spend more money. So I could be wrong, but I don't expect to see the iPad Pro features coming to a mini anytime soon. Yeah, if you're happy with your iPad, just hang on to it for as long as you can. But I think he wants a bigger, I feel or like sling he- sling it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm, sling but it I think me. he's compelled by the new features of the iPad Pro, probably the True Tone display. That's not in my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Oh! We know about that one, don't we? Don't <clears throat> yes. we? We yes, do. Sir. I've talked about it every episode. <laughs> um but yeah so if you really like that just just make the jump it's honestly i do feel like it's worth it and the bigger screen is awesome i roll with a 12.9 dude that's a big one and it's glorious i love that thing it's probably one of my favorite products in a long time from apple that i'm like i genuinely really like this and i know i'm in a minority so it's all good that's cool it's cool all right next call lewis from the bronx Hey, what's up? It's Lewis from the Bronx. Just a question that uh, with the Google I.O., the smart home or the Google Home or anything like that, do you think that Apple would use the Beats, a speaker, next generation, sort of like Alexa or Google Home hybrid, or will they just not do anything with it and focus more on software this year? All right, love the podcast. Bye. What do you think, Beach? I think it would be awesome if you were like, Yo, Dr. Dre, turn on the lights. <laughs> if it, if wasn't, it wasn't Siri anymore, you'd be like, yo, Dr. Dre, turn on my iTunes, please. Play some Dr. Dre. Thanks. I think that would be awesome. So it would just be called like Dre. Dre, yeah. Hey, Dre. Hey, Dre. What's up? Hey, Dre. Hey, Dre. Hey, Dre, Dre. <laughs> hey, Dre, Dre. I think that, again, we talked about it. Sometimes when we talk about these stories, it just becomes more depressing to me that Apple is behind on a lot of this stuff. Like, look... Google actually has the voice technology to make, to potentially, again, make the Google Home really special. Amazon was first. It took them like three years to establish this. They have all the partnerships. Apple doesn't have the best voice recognition software technology. Apple also yeah. isn't good at making partners in general. They like to play in their own, their own like walled garden. They're not really like, hey, come on in. Let's be a part of this. We've seen in general how hard the smart home is to conquer because of all these competing platforms and languages that these devices use to talk to each other. Apple hasn't been able to wrap their head around that. Quite honestly, Google hasn't. If anything, out of all the devices, Amazon supports the most smart home devices with that Alexa setup. So I think that Apple can try to, but in my mind, if they got into the race right now, they would be clearly right now a third place contender oh yeah they would be way behind they would be third just purely because of the voice recognition on it siri has gotten better but it's still not on the same level as google and amazon right now has the advantage of partnerships that could change with this stuff can always change but whenever you enter a market you want to be the top two dogs you don't want to be number three and right now if apple did it they'd be number three and they yeah. missed this boat they missed the boat and i, I don't think that they would be using dre <laughs> um you Dr. Don't? Dre branded Beats Beats head speaker. I don't think that they would be using that at all. It would yeah. be some sort of Apple special Apple thing, you know. Like I commend Amazon so much and I'm glad that Google gave them props at Google IO. Amazon created a product that no one knew about. No one had an idea if it would resonate. They decided to put out it put it out there. They believed in it and look, all of a sudden it's starting to gain all this momentum of this is the new smart home assistant. This is the new, you know, AI interface that we can talk to and that used to be Apple that came up with that type of stuff. The yeah. stuff we didn't know we wanted. And now it's Amazon that did it. And I commend them completely. That's awesome. Well, according to this Dr. Dre video, they're working on a Dr. Dre Android. Um, let me see. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I was just watching this. I was trying to find Dr. Dre music. And then I see Dr. Dre is an Android here. Watch this. Okay. No one can, no one can see this, though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people who watch the video. <laughs> oh, yeah, here he is. Yeah. Okay, he's oh, just. Yeah. He's Wait, just no, doing... there was a scene right here. Dude, he was just. 
Good no, his there. legs were in shackles. He's doing dips on parallel bars, dude. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see? They're working on it. Okay. This is Apple. This is at the Apple headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Sorry about this. Just so had to throw in a little segue there. <laughs> hey, you deserve to. You. This show is yours as much as it is mine, so feel free to insert any non-sequitur videos <laughs> that no one can watch when they listen to them. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's disappointing that we haven't seen that product when Amazon got to it. I, I can't say it enough. I just think it's awesome. Amazon's way ahead of the game, I think man. it's awesome. It's and super cool. It was really cool. Okay, next phone call. Let's see. <clears throat> Is jailbreaking illegal? Oh, no. It is not illegal. It can't be illegal. Can it void your warranty if you brick your phone and somehow can't bring it back to life? Yeah. Uh, is it risky? Is it annoying because you always have to play the rat race? Yes. Uh, we talked about it all last week, but it's not illegal. So if you want to live dangerously, young man, jailbreak. Yes, jailbreak, jailbreak it. If you want to live dangerously. That's what I'm saying. Okay, last phone call. Last call. Hi, this is Stephanie from Canada. I love the show. Keep up the great work. I want to know about the developers conference because I know it has a high ticket price. What is the benefit? What is the value of attending in person? I think maybe I'm being too uh, optimistic to think that they give you free samples of products that they introduce. But I'd love to know um, what the benefit is of attending. Thank you. Well, one of the benefits is that you can stand up and clap for Tim Cook when he walks on stage. Oh, yeah. That's why I would register for <laughs> WWD To see him in person, which is very exciting. I mean, some guy paid like $500,000 for that charity buzz auction to... To go have lunch. Have lunch with them in person. Yes. First of all, Stephanie. Wait, we got to call to all the ladies out there. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Thank you for calling and responding to our call to action, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, but one of the here's the advantages of WWDC as a developer. First of all, there is a lottery system to get into it. So you can't just sign up and go anymore. It's in such high demand that you have to go through a lottery process to then have the ability to buy a ticket. I believe the conference is somewhere like around a thousand bucks. Damn, I could be wrong. Is that but for I know multiple it's pretty days? Or yeah, it's from the day? entire conference. Okay, that's cool. The other advantage is, as a developer, <clears throat> there are lots of sessions and panels that get you inside into the APIs, the hooks that Apple is making open to developers for people to create apps, people to create third-party products that work with apps. It's all the stuff behind the scenes that we benefit from for, for pro programmers and engineers. So that's really what it is. Also, you can sometimes see new product there. It's always fun to be at like a new announcement. I will admit that it is fun when the products are cool. Uh, if they do a keynote for the next generation Apple battery case, I will be furious. <laughs> and no one better stand up for that. But um, it's fun to be at those things. Now we stay here because, you know, we're, we're kind of, I don't want to say we're jaded, but it's actually, we can actually talk more smack here than we can during a live keynote. Yeah. And it's right down the streets. It you is can, like cruise by, the, by the CBSI building and take a look at where we work. And then the other, interested. yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then the other part of that is they do not give you any free stuff. This is Apple. You might get a t-shirt. Maybe. Maybe. Microsoft will give you like a laptop and a Surface and an Xbox. Yeah, Google will give you Google Cardboard and maybe a Chromecast. So, yes, they've done stuff cool. like that. Yeah. Like they've done tablets in the past. Yeah. Um, Apple. Chromebooks, you, I think. Apple, you're lucky to attend. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're at their keynote at their pleasure. It's a privilege. So, um, you know, that's what's going on. But I think that the developers conference, as a developer, come on, it's the largest, you know, one of the, uh, well, by far the largest app store. I want to say the largest mobile platform that goes to Android, but it is the largest app store where people are making that money. So, oh, yeah. It's good. It's cool. So, I think that's it. That's all that's for it? the calls. Thanks for calling from Canada. We appreciate it. Canada. The call. There you go. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for hanging out with us at the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. We will be here again next week talking all that talk, all that munch all that crunch. Say goodbye, Mr. Stephen Beecham. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next week, and have a good weekend. Oh, yeah. Enjoy that. Peace.